please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give before this court today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Please take your seat. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You will be asked a series of questions. Please wait until each question is fully asked before you respond. We will have one person talking at a time. Please try to avoid our natural tendency for nonverbal answers, such as shrugs of the shoulder, nods of the head, as well as uh huhs and uh huhs. Because those don't translate into the record. If there's an objection, please stop talking until it's resolved. Please keep your voice up. And if you would, please take your name and spell it. Detective Ian Reinhold. First name is I A N. Last name R E I N H O L D. Uh, I'm a police officer in the city of East Point. And um, how long have you been a police officer? Uh, almost 16 years. And um, what's your um, current role with the city of East Point? A detective. And um, was that the same role that you were in back in um, January of 2022? Yes. And um, in January of 22, did you um, have some involvement in um, what was initially a, a missing person's case? Yes. And um, who was the person um, that was that was missing? Is I Ann Foster? Um, and um, what was sort of the, the first step that you took in terms of your involvement with, with the case? Uh, I came into work and reviewed um, what was going on with it. Uh, on my way into work that night, I remember making some phone calls and uh, I received information that she was missing before. Uh, then I got into work and uh, her mother, Sierra, no one was in the lobby. So I went right in there and just started talking to her about it. Okay, and do you remember what day that was? That was January 7th. Okay, and um, you said you had, had received some information that um, Zion had been missing before, is that correct? Correct. And so had she been reported uh, sort of as a runaway before? She was from our city on January 5th. I believe the report was made, the initial report. I'm saying before this incident, had she been reported previously? Yes. Okay. And then um, the other report was made on, on January 5th, you said? Yes. Okay. Um, did, um, after, I guess after that first interaction you had with, uh, with Miss Milton, um, were there any developments uh, the next day on January 8th? Uh, the next day uh, there were some, I did speak with her, with uh, Miss Milton, and uh, there were some scam artists starting to call her and try to get money from her. And if she'd send them money, uh, they would let her know where she was at. Okay, and what type of, like, um scam artists were, were going on at that point? I mean, was, was it uh, people saying they had information? Yes. And demanding money? Yes. And um, were these sort of things looked into? Yes. Did any of them um, end up appearing to be legitimate sort of sources of information about the uh, whereabouts of Zion? No. Okay. Um, at, at some point, um, was there a particular um, person of interest who came to light um, in the uh, missing persons investigation? Yes. And um, who was that person? Jalen Brazier. And um, eventually, at some point, um, did you have an opportunity to meet with that person uh, in person? Yes. And do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. And um, just for the record, could you point to him and describe what he's wearing. He has a blue suit on, uh, navy blue. Uh, he has a light blue dress shirt and a light blue tie on, black dress shoes. Okay, if the record could reflect that the witness has identified the uh, defendant. So reflected? Um, at some point during the course of the missing persons investigation, did you make efforts to um, contact uh, Mr. Brazier? Yes. And. Um, what was the what was the date of the first time you attempted to contact him? January tenth, two thousand twenty-two. And um, what was the nature of that um, initial attempted contact that you had? Uh, 
um, hey, how you doing? Um, have you seen Zion? Uh, basically, to have a conversation with him to see what he had to say about it. Uh, with all the ongoings in the investigation, I had to wait a couple of days as things came in. So I did talk to him. Um, did he um, did he say anything to you about the uh, the whereabouts of Zion Foster? He didn't know where she was. Hasn't no. seen her. As he in our conversation, he hasn't um, seen her in months. Okay. Um, and did he offer any other information about? Zion's potential whereabouts during that initial conversation you had? Uh, he said that he hasn't seen her in months. Um, he said that she has been missing before and he found out she was using his house like as an excuse when she left before. Um, I believe he said she was gone for two months at one point, one time she was missing. Okay. Um, after that initial uh, conversation that you had with uh, Mr. Brazier, did you have any further conversations with him? After that day? After yes. that day, yeah. When was the next time that you had contact with him? On the 11th, I called him uh, by phone, and I asked him if he would come in and talk to me. Okay. And um, did he agree to come in to talk to you? He said he would call me back with a time. And that was it for the day. Okay. And did he ever call you back? He did not. And um, did you make further attempts to get into contact with him at that point? Yes, I did. Um, how many times would you say you attempted to contact him at that point to talk? Uh, three more times. Okay. What were the dates of those three additional times that you attempted to contact him? On the 12th, I called him in the morning, left him a voicemail. In the afternoon, I called him again on the 12th. And then one more time on the 13th in the morning, I called and left a voicemail. Okay. And um, at some point during the course of the investigation, um, did some um, relevant video footage come into your possession? Yes. And um, what were the um, what was the source of that footage? Who, how did you come into, con into possession of it? Uh, there was a ring video that was sent to me. Okay. Uh, from Melrose in East Point. And um, the, what's the significance of that location in, uh, on Melrose? Uh, the video faces uh, Zion's house. Okay. And was there any other video that you um, came into possession of? Uh, yes. There was video of uh, uh, 19451 Greenfield. There's a uh, video of that house Okay. from across the street. And um, I want to walk through uh, some of that video right now that's been admitted as um, exhibits uh, 21 and 22. So I want to start with um, exhibit 22. Uh, may I publish, Your Honor? Yes. And may I publish um, 21 at the appropriate time as well? Sure, of course. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, bring up this. Uh, so there's two files on the exhibit. Are you familiar with both of those uh, video files? Yes. And um, if I if I click on the first one, ending uh, 2219, the, the file name for the record, um, and um, this uh, again, what's the source of this particular footage? This right here is from uh, uh, an email, and it was downloaded from the Ring app. Okay. And um, the uh, the house sort of at the center of the uh, the video. Um, is there any, I guess, significance to that particular house? That is Zion's house, twenty two one sixty six. Okay, and that's on uh, Melrose in Melrose East in Point. Point. Yes, sir. Okay, and you have some familiarity with that area. Yes. And um, the timestamp on the video uh, right now, and just for the record, I've, I've stopped it, I think, 12 seconds, and I'm going to go back to the start. Um, what's, what's the timestamp reflected on the, the video? 
January 4th, 2022, 22, 19 hours and 10 seconds. And um, do, you, do you have, uh, I guess, experience dealing with, with ring videos throughout your, uh, your time as a detective? I've used it before seeing the videos, yes. Um, and do you have any reason to doubt the, the sort of accuracy of that, that time? I don't doubt it. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, start the video. Um, what, I guess this, you see the car that, that, that goes by, is there any significance to that particular vehicle um, in terms of the investigation? No. This is just one clip from um, 10, it'd be 10, 19 p.m., is that correct? Yes. And um, is it your under, how, what is your understanding of how ring cameras work in terms of when they record, when they don't record? Um, motion or noise. Okay, so if there's motion, that triggers the recording? Yes. So if a car drives down the street, that could potentially trigger the recording? If it's set up that way. Okay. And this particular time at uh, uh, ten nineteen, this just happens to be one of the clips that was obtained. Correct. Correct. If we go to the second clip um, in the file uh, ending two two four one. Um, back to the uh, beginning. What's the what's the time reflected um, in this clip? The time is 22, 41, and 59 seconds. And um, if I restart it, Yes. And um, in terms of the the driveway that it pulled into, is that the driveway of Zion's home or a different home? That's a different home. And um, in terms of the vehicle that you saw pull in at uh, this is 10.42 p.m., was there any significance um, to that vehicle in terms of the investigation? Yes. And. Um, let me ask you this, during the course of the investigation, did you have an opportunity to familiarize yourself with whether the uh, defendant um, owned and used a particular type of vehicle? Yes. And um, what type of vehicle did the uh, defendant use at this time? A 2005 white Acura. Okay, and looking at this uh, vehicle that you, we just saw um, in this footage, um, is that a vehicle that is, uh, in your experience, uh, consistent or inconsistent with the type of vehicle the defendant drove? Consistent. Okay. Um, and you also mentioned some footage that you um, obtained from across the street from the, uh, the Greenfield location. Um, and I'm going to publish um, Exhibit 21 and there's three files on here. I'm gonna start uh, for the record with the file ending 441. And um, this, this particular video, um, what's your understanding of the, uh, the, the type of system that, that captured this video? I don't know what system it is. So you don't have like personal familiarity with, with this particular system? Correct. Okay, but it, in terms of the system's positioning based on the video and based on your familiarity with the Greenfield location, where, where was the system positioned? Across the street. Okay. And um, this footage, is it is it fair to say this is like a, a screen grab from somebody's phone? Yes. That you came into possession of? 
And um, does that um, indicate particular dates and times? Uh, I see some times on here. I, when you play it, I, it might have the date also on the bottom. Okay. So um, I'm going to start the, uh, the video. Um, And um, it might be too small to see on, on this screen, but do you, are you able to see a date reflected um, here on the video? Yes. And what is the uh, date that's reflected? January 4th, 2022. And what's the time that's reflected? 2300 hours and 55 seconds. And um, you've reviewed this video before? Yes. And you reviewed other evidence in the case? Yes. And um, based on... Um, your role in the investigation and your understanding of the evidence, do you have any reason to um, be skeptical of the uh, times reflected on this video? No. Okay. Um, so at this point um, on the video at the 11 p.m. point, um, is there a particular building here that's uh, significant in terms of the investigation that's reflected here? The uh, house on the far left, um, the most left tree is 19451 Greenfield. Okay. Um, and so if I uh, use my cursor to point to it, would that be this house right here? Yes. And um, where would the driveway uh, are, are you familiar with that location, I guess, throughout the course of your investigation? Yes. And um, did you, um, throughout the course of your investigation, identify someone who resided there? Yes. And who was it that resided there? Jalen Brazer. And um, is this particular building a, a duplex? Yes. And um, do you recall which side of the duplex uh, Mr. Brazer resided at? The left side. Okay, so it'd be this side? Yes. And um, where would the driveway be associated with um, his side of the duplex? Just to the left of that tree, right where your, the mouse is at. Okay, and at this point in time, reflected um, at 11 p.m., is there any vehicle in that driveway? No. So now would it be fair to say that uh, that clip is ending and we're going to see a, a different clip from this camera system? Yes. And what is the time reflected on the video at this point? 2310 and 39 seconds. Okay. And did you see any vehicles in the driveway at that point? I did not. And what's the time reflected now? 2314 and 20 seconds. this point at 11.14, um, do you see a vehicle uh, in the frame? Yes. And um, is there any significance to that particular vehicle in terms of the investigation? Yes. And what is that significance? It appears to be a similar vehicle that picked Zion up from Melrose Street in East Point. Okay. And then if we move on um, to the next clip, what's the time reflected at this point? 23, 15 hours and seven seconds. And um, in terms of the driveway, um, is there anything significant now in terms of the investigation in the driveway? There's a white car in the driveway. Okay, I'm gonna continue playing the video. It's a little bit hard to see on this particular screen, but have you looked at this video, you know, sort of close up on your computer? 
Yes. And um, at this point in the video, at 11.15 p.m., um, in terms of the investigation, was there anything significant identified? Yes. And what was that? An individual at the front door. Okay, how many? Do Two. Two? Yes. Yes. Next clip was at 11:52, but it was briefly shown. Was that correct? Correct. And now we're at 11:58. And as far as you can tell, is the vehicle still stationary in the driveway? Yes. Correct. And is the uh, the vehicle still stationary? It is. Is that correct? Correct. And again, is the vehicle uh, just stationary? It is. Yes. And at this point, we're at 1.41 a.m., is that correct? That's correct. And it, as far as you're aware, is this the first time the vehicle moves after Yes.
this point we're at 1.47 a.m. And where's the vehicle at this point? It's backed up on the side of the house. So that'd be back in this area? Yes. Correct. And um, in terms of, I'm going to pause the video briefly. In terms of the area around the around the front door, is there anything significant that was observed in terms of the investigation at this point? There's an individual standing right there, outside the door. light just came on the car and it looked like someone was at the passenger side then they're on the driver's side. And now we're at 149 a.m. is that correct? That's correct. It is. Yes. And um, is, the, uh, is there anything notable in the driveway at this point? No. Now we're at 159 a.m.? Is that correct? Correct. And again, anything notable in the driveway at this point? No. a.m. is that correct? Yes. And is there anything notable um, in the driveway at that point? No. Is that correct? Yes. <coughs> and um, is there anything notable um, at this point? The white car is pulling back in the driveway. Correct. And the uh, car is still in the driveway at this point? Yes.
Correct. And um, is the uh, car still in the driveway? Yes. No. How about that? Well, the trunk opening. Okay. And that's at 2.42 a.m.? Yes. backing out, would that be fair to say? Yes. And now at 2.43 uh, a.m., uh, the driveway's empty again, is that correct? That's correct. I did. And um, just as a general matter, just to uh, make it clear to the jury, what is a search warrant? A uh, search warrant is for um, to go in someone's house, phone, car, uh, cell phone records. Uh, you have to get it, you, you type it out, and the judge has to sign it. Okay, and um, did you um, draft a uh, search warrant for phone records in this case? Yes. And um, was that for phone records from uh, the defendant and from Zion Foster? Yes. Okay. And um, did you also draft a search warrant to search uh, the, the vehicle that was observed um, in these uh, videos? Yes. And did you also draft a search warrant to search the, the, the home belonging to the defendant um, on Greenfield? Yes. Um, and at some point, um, was the defendant's home searched? Yes. And did you participate in that search? Yes. Who else participated in the search? Uh, the FBI was there. Their, their team was okay. also there. And so they had a team of people to, to process the, uh, the search. Would that be accurate to say? Yes. Um, now, in terms of your role there, I, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, I want to show you what's been admitted as Exhibit 10. I'm sorry, Exhibit 11. Um, you see the background? this exhibit? Yes. Are you familiar with this exhibit? Yes. Um, does, um, is there anything significant about that background um, uh, in connection with the, the search that you conducted at the Greenfield residence? That screenshot would be consistent with 19451 Greenfield, okay. the inside. In terms of um, your search of that home, um, did you observe anything uh, significant? Uh, I believe so. Um, there was a cracked up yellow iPhone um, in the family room. Uh, there was a vacuum cleaner 
uh, empty vacuum box from the new vacuum cleaner. Uh, appeared to be a suicide note on the kitchen table. Uh, in the backyard, there was a metal table with some glass. Didn't seem weathered. Okay. Um, and that was that table was outside. Yes. Okay. And you said it didn't seem weathered. What do you mean by that? Uh, it wasn't all rusty. It didn't appear like it was. It's been outside for a year. It didn't it didn't seem like it was that long. Okay. Any um. And um. At some point, did you um, come into possession of um, the defendant's cell phone? Yes. And did you um, do anything with that cell phone when it came into your possession? Yes. What did you do with it? I got a search warrant for it, and um, I went to the phone. And then after, I gave it to uh, Detroit police to be dumped. Okay. And when you got the search warrant for it, did you, um, did you ever have an opportunity to turn the phone on? Yes. And um, did you did you look through the phone? I did. Um, did you see anything that caught your attention? Yes. And what was it? Uh, Zion's number was not in there, and uh, it appeared uh, there was nothing before January sixth. Okay. Um, at, at some point. Um, did you uh, participate in a uh, interview of uh, Mr. Brazier? Yes. And um, was that on January 19th of 2022? I believe it was. Okay. And who was uh, present at that interview? Uh, Jalen Brazier, um, his attorney, and Sergeant Jones from Detroit Police. Okay. And when you say his attorney, um, this was a, a, a prior attorney that he had representing him? Yes. And um, after that interview, um, was there ultimately a, a case that was initiated in um, Macomb County um, relating to uh, the investigation that you did in this case? Yes. And um, as part of that case being initiated in, in Macomb County, um, <coughs> was Mr. Brazier um, at some point held somewhere in Macomb County? Yes. And where would that have been? Macomb County Jail. Okay. And um, just to, I guess, clarify, that Macomb County case um, did not involve charges of, of murder, correct? Correct. Would that have been for... Um, involving the sort of statements that he had given to you denying that he had been with Zion? Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you, nothing further. <coughs> Good morning, detective. Good morning, sir. Now, you reviewed some footage, a uh, viewed footage of a ring camera that was from the East Point location, correct? Correct. Okay. And you personally did not extract this footage, did you? I did not. Okay. And you were asked whether or not you doubt the time being accurate, and you stated that you had no reason to doubt it, correct? Correct. Okay. You, have, you didn't do any type of independent verification to determine whether or not that particular date was accurate, correct? Correct. Okay. And you didn't do any type of independent verification to verify whether that time was accurate, correct? That's correct. And you also stated that some ring cameras operate differently depending on the settings, if it's by sound or if it's by motion, correct? That's my understanding, yes. Okay, that's your understanding, okay. And you're not an expert on ring cameras, correct? I am not. Okay, and you didn't do any independent verification to see how this particular ring camera was set up, correct? Correct. And in reference to the video footage that allegedly depicts from the Greenfield address, you don't even know what type of system that was, correct? Correct. Okay. So you wouldn't even know whether or not how that particular camera is set to record, correct? Correct. Okay. 
and you didn't do any independent verification on that particular camera system as far as the, trying to determine whether or not the date was accurate, correct? Correct. And you didn't do any independent verification to see if the time was correct, correct? Correct. Okay. This particular footage was forwarded to you, correct? Yes. Okay. And the only footage you were able to view is the footage that whoever sent, whoever allegedly took the video footage, the individual time frame that they selected were the only ones you were able to view, correct? Correct. Okay, so you were not able to view other time frames outside of what, which ones were provided to you, correct? Correct. And you had an opportunity to get a, a search warrant for this particular device, correct? I did. And you just failed to do so? I don't recall what the situation was, but I never ended up getting a search warrant for it. Okay. And you never got a search warrant for the ring camera in the East Point location, correct? That's correct. Now you stated that this particular automobile that was in East Point to you, it appeared to be a similar car as Mr. Brazier's, correct? Correct. Okay, but you can't definitively say it was the exact car. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. You were not able to view the license plate for his car, correct? I couldn't see it, no. Okay, and you can't definitively say what make and model this particular car was, correct? Correct. Now, you were present during the search warrant, correct? I was. Okay. And you didn't see or recall any blood being found in this particular location, correct? That's correct. And you made reference to a table that was outside, correct? Yes. The glass was outside also, correct? Yes. Okay. So it would, from your, I guess, opinion, it would seem like this table was broken outside, correct? Uh, no, I mean, it could have been broken outside and some pieces were out there. I, I don't know how, it, I, can't, I can't answer your question. Okay, but the pieces, the broken pieces of glass were outside, correct? Yes. Okay. In this iPhone you recovered, it didn't have any evidentiary value in this particular case, did it? I don't know. I, I, didn't, I did not have any, no. Okay. And you personally didn't take any pictures of this particular residence, correct? Correct. So you didn't have any pictures as which to verify whether or not this particular screenshot actually originated from this particular location, correct? No. Okay. I watched a body cam video. You didn't have any pictures, correct? Oh, correct, yes. Now, at some point in time, uh, you spoke to Mr. Brazier's then attorney, correct? Correct. And he called you to make arrangements for Mr. Brazier and himself to come in and make a statement, correct? Correct. Okay. And this was in the same time vicinity of when you reached out to Mr. Brazier, correct? Uh, I believe that, that was January 18th. Okay. Yeah, this, yeah, this, yes. Same time frame, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then, in fact, Mr. Brazier and his attorney did come in, correct? Yes. Okay. And provided a statement, correct? Correct. Okay. At some point in time, you spoke to uh, Ms. Foster's mother, correct? Yes. Okay. And she came into the East Point Police Station, correct? correct? From your understanding, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you think it was just another runaway at first? I did. Okay. Because you had prior knowledge that Ms. Foster, Zion Foster, ran away before, correct? Correct. Okay. And it was your understanding that, or maybe opinion, that some of Miss some of Zion Foster's mother's uh, conduct was somewhat odd to you, correct? Correct. Okay. And 
you were under the understanding that, or opinion, that maybe she didn't do, she didn't investigate to the fullest potential to find her daughter, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, as far as this Greenfield location, you were unable to ascertain who exited from the vehicle, correct? Correct. Okay. And you can't definitively say that video was from the date it purports to be from, correct? Correct. Thank you. Detective, no further questions. I just want to make, uh, I guess, one thing clear. Your your initial phone contact with the defendant was on what date? Uh, January 10th. January 10th. And then you had a subsequent conversation with him the next day, is that correct? Yes. And then um, I believe you said you made some multiple attempts in the days after that to contact him, correct? Correct. And it wasn't until uh, the 18th that there were some arrangements made for him to come in to make a statement? That's correct. And then he actually showed up on the 19th, is that correct? Correct. So there was a, a pretty significant <coughs> gap in time, is that right? There was about a week, Okay. just over a week. And during that time, um, what was going on with this case publicly? Was there, was there media attention? Yes. Um, how much? A lot. Uh, no, nothing further. Thank you. Any questions for the jury? 